In this video, I'm going to show you how to play with a smoother bow hand. Having a smoother bow hand will not only make it easier for you to sound good, but it'll actually make a lot of other things on the violin easier as well, like advanced uh, bouncing techniques. I'm going to show you the collet technique, which you often see with most advanced players and professionals. I'm Joel Kennedy with Kennedy Violins, and today I'm going to show you four proven exercises that if you do these exercises a little bit every day when you practice, you're guaranteed to have a lot smoother bow hand and you'll sound the way that you want to sound. Keep watching! So today we're talking about how to play with a smoother bow, otherwise known as collet technique. Now collet is just a French word that means stuck or glue. and when you have a really good collet technique, it just enables you to have more control over your bow. The collet, the collet enables you to maintain a, a consistent and constant pressure to have your bow, you know, stuck or glued to the string, especially during bow changes. Right? And Right? So whether you're playing uh, melodic stuff, you can, it able, enables you to have more control over your power, your tone, your sound quality, your projection, your color. It just gives you more control. But it also doesn't just apply to melodic sections. It also applies to any kind of spiccato technique that you use. So you might notice, even with a simple spiccato, you'll notice a motion in the hand. And even with advanced spiccato techniques like Sadier, you'll see the same thing. Right? So the reason why you see Cole used or evident with advanced players or professional players and so much of what they do is simple. Because Cole equals relax. It equals a relaxed hand. So remember, when you're playing a stringed instrument, your number one enemy is tension. Tension is your enemy. Now, how do you know if you have tension? Well, you will have straight joints. You'll have locked joints. So on your bow hand, before you start practicing collet, it's very important that you make sure that you do not have a, a locked or straight pinky and you do not have a locked or straight thumb. Your thumb should be allowed to be able to move. Your pinky should be able to move. Now your pinky will move from an extended position to a bent position. Same with your thumb. It'll need to be able to move from an extended position to a straight position. But the point is, is that cole is impossible unless you have um, flexible fingers. And having flexible fingers, that's your friend. That's going to enable you to take your playing up to the next level basically, by having relaxed fingers. It's the same thing as like your knees. If your knees are locked, if you lock your, your knee joint in your leg and you try to walk or run, not only will you look ridiculous, kind of like Frankenstein, I would imagine, but you won't be able to walk or run very well. The same idea pertains to your bow. If you've got relaxed fingers, then you're going to be able to manage your bow a lot better. Cole <laughs> is an effect, or really almost the result, of just having proper bow hold and um, proper technique and not having a tense hand. Okay, so how do you get cole? Well, there's a million different exercises and a lot of different ways to practice cole. So I'm going to show you four simple exercises today that are proven to absolutely work. You get a lot of bang for your buck. So you'll improve the quickest, I think, with these four exercises. And there are, they are also the easiest exercises. So whether you've dabbled in Cole before or you've never done it before, if you just practice these four exercises every time you uh, get your violin out or your viola out and you um, incorporate them into your warm-up routines, you will have Cole or you will have better Cole. So you just have to be, you have to be patient. Okay, so exercise number one. So exercise number one and exercise number two actually, they both focus on teaching your fingers to move properly, right? It's important that you teach your fingers to be able to move but hold the bow at the same time. That's the trick. Be able to move your fingers, meaning flexibility and not rigidity, right? But not drop your bow. So the first exercise, you'll actually be just holding your bow properly, bent pinky, 
bent thumb, and you will be pushing the bow up and down straight out. So here's your, here's your proper bow hand, right? Now you're just gonna push up. So you're extending your pinky, extending your thumb. Down, up, down, up. And each time you go up, you're extending your pinky and your thumb. Each time you come down, you're, you're, you're uh, collapsing them down. Now, when we're in this position, that is an extreme position that you won't necessarily have while you're playing. But remember, we're just teaching our fingers how to move and hold the bow at the same time. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. We're just going straight up, straight out. We're just pushing our fingers straight out. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay? So once you're pretty comfortable with that, then we're gonna do the next exercise, which is very similar. And that's where we're gonna push, actually be focusing on pushing our fingers up rather than out. So now instead of straight out, now we're gonna push them up. Now this one, you'll be moving your wrist a little bit. So up, down. But it's the same thing. You're extending your thumb and your pinky, and then you're, and then you're compressing them as you push up. So down, up, 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 down, up. Okay? So for the third exercise, all we're going to do is we're going to take this motion, down, up, down, up, and we're going to apply it to your instrument. Okay, so we're not trying to make a pretty sound here. All we're trying to do is teach our fingers to do the exact same motion, but now on our instrument. By the way, if you pronate your bow, it's gonna make it easier. So don't play with a flat bow, pronate your bow so it's tilted, that'll make it easier for you to move. Okay, so. So. And you want to do it on all string, finger, uh, strings. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, all the strings. So you want to practice that so you're pretty good at all the strings. Okay, so now exercise number four. Now this one will take the longest, and it's the one that you'll do the most, where you're basically going to be incorporating cole into your real playing. And you want to incorporate very simply at first with your warm-up. Let's, let's say your scales, right? Scales are an excellent way to warm up. You should always warm up. And so you want to practice this cole, an exaggerated cole, when you change your bows. <laughs> So this is an exaggerated motion. So when you're doing the up bow, you have extended thumb, extended pinky, and you're leading with your wrist. Then for the down bow, you're collapsing your thumb and pinky and going down. So extend, collapse. Extend, collapse. Of course, you don't have to just use this on scale. Of course, you can just use it on open bows too, but open strings. Every string. Now at first when you start practicing these exercises, it's going to feel wrong. It's going to feel bad. It's going to feel, probably, like 
this is an is an added thing that you're put that's making your playing more difficult. So why should I do it? And I'm having more difficulty controlling my bow. Not not it's not easier for me to control my bow. This is just another thing I have to think about instead of just playing my violin. Well, that's true. At first, that's the way it'll be. So learning Cole is kind of like, you know, CPR. If a person's heart stops, you know, somebody has to come along and restart the heart. So how do they do that? Well, they have to push the heart in and then the heart, then the heart expands. They have to push it down, the heart expands. So they're artificially, you know, make, creating the movement for the heart. And then eventually the heart will take over and do the motion by itself. So in the very beginning stages, when you're learning Cole, you are doing an exaggerated motion that's artificial. It's not going to be necessarily helpful to you. But what you're doing is you're teaching your hand. Now eventually, more and more of this motion will become a part, organically, just become a part of what your hand feels is normal with playing your instrument. And eventually it becomes more and more natural. It becomes, and then as it becomes pretty natural for you and you start really just, ha it's habitually just always the way that you changed your bow, then you'll learn how to control it better. And then you'll learn how to optimize your playing with the collet. And then, you, you know, once you develop more flexibility, which is really what it's all about, is flexibility in your hand. Once you start developing that flexibility, then you will be in more control of just about everything that you do on your instrument. So guys, I hope this video helps. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there, that giant subscribe button. Go ahead and uh, take some time to do that now. Okay, awesome. And don't forget to hit that alert bell, you know, because uh, you'll get a notification when I create a new video, and I do that all the time now. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, hey, just put them below. I answer pretty much all the questions or comments. So hey, just say hi, ask me a question, whatever. I'm cool. I'm right there. And visit me on social media. Check out Joel's Corner on KennedyViolins.com. There's a link in the description. And remember, you know, at Kennedy Violins, you know, we're all players and teachers. So if you have any questions in the future, hey, just uh, shoot us a line anytime. We'd be happy to get back to you. Thanks.